Okay, so why listen to me, right? <laughs> like you're spending your precious time here listening to me, me go on about consciousness and money and um, and bliss and joy and my story is on my about page on my website, johannagardner.com about me, right? You're welcome to go to read that if you don't know me. <laughs> um, however, uh, there, are, there are certain things that some people, especially on this beautiful chat, there's lots of my, my besties who know my story, um, that, that may not, you know, have realized about me. So I love this quote Jim Rohn wrote. He said, if somebody hands you a million dollars, you best become a millionaire quick so you can keep the money. It really, that's so true. Oh my gosh. I was 19, I was a single mom, and I sincerely wanted to, to be rich. I wanted to be able to pay for my son's um, college. I, my parents um, had money. They would necessarily grow up very wealthy, even though I grew up in a wealthy environment, let's just say. Um, I, and I, I just wanted to make, I just wanted to make a ton of money. I wanted to become a millionaire. Um, I didn't necessarily, I grew up with millionaires, my parents, my dad worked in the airline industry. So we were traveling all over. I was born in England and my British accent might come out <laughs> um, now that I've said that. And then I grew up in Hong Kong for 11 years and went back to boarding school. And I went to very, very elite boarding school. It was filled with uh, very, very wealthy people, as well as some not so wealthy people. We, we had um, people who were in scholarships, et cetera. But there were celebrities, kids who went to my school, such as Peter Gabriel's kids and Anna Gabriel were still Facebook friends. Um, and then there was a prince and multi, multi millionaires that were part of this boarding school. And so I, I was, I definitely had the contrast because I was living in Hong Kong. I would go to Asia and there was incredible amount of poverty uh, throughout Asia. There's a, there's 4 billion people on the planet that live on less than $8 a day. If you saw my post, um, there's, there's an incredible am amount of poverty, what we would consider poverty. Some of them are the happiest people on the planet, FYI. Um, and then I off, but then when they went and I chased money, um, things got really kind of crazy. I uh, became a real estate investor. I've had hundreds of thousands of dollars cash in the bank. Um, I've had $160,000 payday. I've owned seven and a half million dollars worth of real estate, including 97, yes, 97 mortgages. And I've owned a hotel, it was a seven figure business and a wedding, five star wedding business. Incredible wealth, right? And I was waiting for the happiness check in the mail and it didn't come. And then things kind of turned around um, and uh, 2008 hit. And if you can imagine having 97 mortgage payments, weren't all necessarily uh that was a lot of debt and things became very um it, it became pretty crazy very fast it was a, a huge domino effect and um and there were moments where we're really 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 hard i um i remember the worst thing that could happen to me what well, what i thought could happen to me was that i would lose my home and um, that that moment happened. I uh, we were in pretty pretty bad mess, and and I was a f the reason why we had to stay in this particular home was because my son was in high school, and if we moved anywhere else, he wouldn't be able to continue staying in this high school and graduate. He was really close to graduation. And so because 2008 was kind of a nightmare and there were a lot of foreclosures going on, there was, you know, the possibility of having cops come to my door and, and asking us to put our possessions on the, on the lawn um, and then take our house, take the house keys and everything. So that was really, really scary. It was a very scary moment. I have nonstop collectors all day. 
it was it was it was pretty miserable. Um, I left the house voluntarily. Cops hadn't come. I think they were busy with all the other homes that they were having to foreclose on. Um, we ended up going to bankruptcy court in 2010. It was the same weekend my son graduated from high school. It was pretty chaotic. Were some other things that happened. Um, and this, I've had some pretty interesting moments with money. Uh, I've gone to the grocery store <laughs> and embarrassingly, uh, got, you know, bought a whole bunch of groceries. And I've had total judgment about people who've done this before. And, you know, I was like, okay, I buy the groceries, put my debit card in. And the debit card gets declined. And it's like, no, I, I'm pretty sure I put that $70 in my account. I'm pr pretty sure. Nope. <laughs> and embarrassingly, I just had to sort of like make some kind of funny mistake or excuse to the, to the manager who came up and had to take all my groceries and put them in the refrigerator. <laughs> so um, really embarrassing moments with with the lack of money as well as all the craziness of money and so that's why i'm really really passionate about having these conversations with you because i've gone through the spectrum right i've i've been really up had the fancy car i had a lexus it was gorgeous convertible and um the Things were going pretty bad at that time, and I still got to keep my car because my parents had absolutely um, gifted us a bunch of money, and so it would just help make the payments until they, until we actually went to, to bankruptcy court and they took the car. And I went into, I drove it up, and uh, then I went into to go meet with a real estate investor, and he was actually going to take my pro some of my properties for zero, you know, I mean, like I was just giving them away to him. And so I signed all the documents, I came back out and there was this lady came in and she said to me, oh, wow, I, this is this your car? And I was like, yeah, it's my car. She goes, one day I wanna have a car like that. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell her, <laughs> but I was like literally going broke. <laughs> like life was pretty bad. But just, she, you know, she had the, she had the idea that having a fancy car was like her dream, and that would be amazing for her. So I just kind of left it at that. But you never know what's really going on behind the scenes um, with people's money stories. So um, it's just a, a lesson learned to not have judgment upon whether people have a ton of money or no money. <laughs>